This week on Get In Deep, we had Shash Kapoor. He flew all the way over from Sydney just to stop in and chat to me. Actually, he had a bunch of gigs that he was doing and I happened to be the side thought. That's still a win, right? We talked about all the differences between Sydney and Perth. We also had a massive chat about comedy, life, and putting pokies in the pubs over here. I think he's against it from what I can tell, but I reckon it's probably gonna happen no matter what once the population picks up. Side note, two more weeks before I pick the winners of the meme competition. So if you think I've said anything funny, wise, or absolutely stupid, make a meme. Send it to me, I'll put it up. You might win 50 bucks. There's less than 10 entries, so <laughs> pretty good odds. Bro, I had tears coming, man. It's like I haven't seen free parking in eight months now. <laughs> I was like, yeah. But also, like, Sydney has its own pace, very different pace. Like, in Sydney, you can wake up, go to work, come back, go to the gym, go home, take a shower, go to a gig, crush the gig, have dinner with your mates, have some hangs, go to another social mate's place for a poker night, repeat the same thing Saturday. That's okay for Sydney. Yeah. You do two gigs in Perth a night and people are like, fucking, hey, this guy, this guy hustles. Oh, there's like, no, oh. everyone is hustling because that's the norm. Yeah. So that was the biggest one. But I think it also like switches you on, like where you're like, fuck, you got to be on your... You actually have to be on. Yeah, you got to be switched on all the time. Yeah. It's good. Does it make you feel like over here is like sleepy, like backwards? No, nah, man, it's got its own uh, pace. That's what I say. So like a lot of people complain Perth is slow this time. And I'm like, no, not really. It's got its own pace. Roads are wider. You got a better scene everywhere you go. Like freeway is literally going through Apple Cross, this and that. Like you have a nice scene on the right. Yeah. You take the West Coast Highway. You have beautiful Fremantle, you know, like the dock is seen. At Indian Ocean, you can see that. That's all just pretty. So Perth is, you can say slow, but it has its own pace because people appreciate the things around it. Yeah. And the way the city is designed and the timelines are designed is you get to appreciate. We start at nine or like eight or whatever, finish at five. We already two hours behind Sydney with daylight saving three hours. It's a different life, man. You know, we we get up nice and slow, go to work, make good money, come home, spend time with loved ones. It's a very different vibe. Roads are wider. People fucking indicate in Perth. They say that people in Australia cannot merge true, but people in Perth actually use indicator lights. Oh, so it's like it's it's better for merging over here than it is over there. Yeah. Wow. Merging is not a problem there because no one gives a fuck. People just, they just do everyone it. is angry. Everyone is busy. They don't give a fuck what you think, what your opinions are, how you felt. Over here, you do a wave. No one does a wave. People are too busy in Sydney. They're like, I don't have time for this shit. <laughs> I'm I, got, I got shit to do. Yeah, it's like, yeah. fair enough, man. Oh, so people don't, they're just like, we're not even complaining. We're just, we're force feeding our way in. Yeah. We're pushing in. Fuck you. And and I recently got into a crash on my motorbike. Luckily, not a lot of damage to me, just some to the motorbike. But in Sydney, people, you know, okay, so when you go to the test, it says three indicators and then you change lanes. Okay, that's the law. That's the rule. Yeah. Now, some may, might say three indicators too long. That's the fucking in the handbook, road safety handbook. I don't know if it's a law. It's in the handbook. In Sydney, you want to go left. You, this is how you turn. You turn. So you flick your light at the same time and people just turn. Oh, so it's just like, we're coming. Yeah, we're coming. Like, too bad, can't you didn't see. And then if you hit someone from the back, of course you're at fault. Mm. Like that's just, that's just how the norm goes, unless you have dash cam to prove otherwise. Yeah. It just sucks, man. Man, that is, yeah, it's a good point because if you hit him in the back, you're, you're the one at fault. Yeah. Fuck, I'm coming. Mm. Man, that would, I would, I know dudes that would, jump out of their car and just stove that cunt. <laughs> and you want yeah, to punch their head in. You'd be like, fuck you. Yeah, but then, true, but you can only do that in Perth because in Sydney, they you still have stop. to get to, yeah. They just hit you and go. They don't stop. You also have a good job to get to. You're not late. Your boss is pissed. Their boss is pissed. You're like, fuck. That is why dash cam goes a long way. Yeah. Like, I highly recommend everyone to get a dash cam. Yeah, I mean, if I, if I change states, I probably will have to. Yeah. Because here, fuck, I do 60,000 Ks a year. Yeah. Don't have a dash cam. Yeah. I just like drive like a granny and I'm all good. Yeah. <laughs> now get a dash cam. Use promo code Brown Spicy Man to get 5% off. <laughs> but now, you, you, dash cam, bro. Like I have it on my car. Yeah. Wish I had put it on my bike. I have my bike dash cam from the previous bike. But then the previous bike was an expensive bike and the dash cam is worth $1,000. So it made sense. Yeah. And now the you're like, bike. I don't want to put that on my cheap bike. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a three grand bike. And I'm like, it takes three hours to put the dash cam in. And I'm like, Ugh. 
should I? And now I'm like, I, I should have. That's well, just, just stupid. If you crash, that's like not the bike problem, but your problem. Your like, problem. You're Correct. fucked. And now Correct. you fail. Yeah. I wish I had a camera recording that day, man. Fuck. I also have a GoPro. I sometimes attached to the helmet. Fuck. You got to record your rides in Sydney, man. But so, a GoPro, you only get like 20 minutes before it overheats and shuts off, eh? No, no, no. Really? No, if they're this legit one. ones. <laughs> this one. If they're legit ones. Uh, that's, a, that's a GoPro. <laughs> <laughs> if they bought for proper full price, uh, I think you'll be fine. Th- there are certain models that heat up, but uh, y- you can do a firmware update that usually fixes it, or you can contact GoPro. They'll send you new batteries or something to work it out. Uh, my way of doing it with that is like, I have to take the battery out, plug it into a USB charger, keep them little flaps down and make sure mm. this is well ventilated. Yeah, Otherwise shit. that thing just shuts off. Yeah, wow. What, what model is that again? 10. 10, yeah, man. I got, I've got. i used 10. I've never had that issue. Oh, it's only because it's like long form. That's mm. And I've, everywhere I looked up, it's like this is the only way to make it work. Like, yeah. This is me off. But had you told me before, I could have probably told you to get mine, like 12. I got a Hero 12 Black, Hero 12 Black Gas. Yeah, sick. I hardly use it. One of the stupidest purchases I've done Go Last year, yeah. Why do you? I mean, it's surprising for you to buy a GoPro. Like you and I don't know. Just I've just always loved GoPro. So yeah. there's some things I've done in life which I couldn't afford as a kid. So now that I'm an adult, I just get it. Yeah. Why? Yeah, but now, I don't know. You've 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 satiated that need now. Yeah. You've got you're like I've done it, and then you're like oh, I don't need it. GoPro five. Okay, think about this. My first one was four. Bought second hand. Five bought second hand. Six bought second hand. Seven bought second hand. Fuck you've Eight gone bought second hand. Nine brand new, so 10 brand new, 11 brand new, 12 brand new. Sold the old one, got a new one, sold the old one. I made good money selling these and buying these, man. Really yeah. good money. But that, that was just stroke of luck, I guess, as well. But yeah, man, so that, that, that's me with GoPros. Like, I, I, don't, I don't have a need for it. I just buy it. And then I sometimes, I wanted to vlog and I've done fuck all. And then I realized you can do every, anything and everything on your phones these days. Yeah. So you don't really need. That's like, only if you're, you're a fuckwit. Yeah. Like GoPros are shockproof and like idiot proof. Yeah. So if you're gonna drop it and be a spaz, yeah, get one of them. <laughs> I, I I'm thinking just doing with it, it with phones now. That is why I've just got like a phone just for content, one for like normal use. Like, yeah. yeah. Also yeah. got the two phones, one two for the phones. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Bro, the sixteen makes it easy Pro. for uploads and everything like that. You can everything, yeah. photos and the videos on the sixteen Pro. Well, there's there's been a couple of Lord. movies. There's a movie recently made that's just off iPhone cameras. Yeah. Shit. You're like, man, yeah, okay. They're pretty pricey, but like versus buying a normal camera, you know. You pay then two you grand. think about it, like a normal camera is still gonna set you up by two grand or something. Yeah. This allows you to make phone calls as well on top of it. Yeah. Well, and you can do everything on it. On it, yeah. yeah Just like edit everything computer. on the spot. Cap cut this that. Cap cut is also gonna have to. Yeah. Have I've got cap cut. Yeah, pro. Nah. Yeah. It's fuck. fucking. Cap cut is getting terrible, man. Capitalist. It was so good. It was so year. good. Now, now the latest one. They just put a CapCut logo on the top left corner of a video. I'm like, bro, like, what the fuck, man? Yeah. 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 Make it affordable. People will pay money. Well, it's a subscription bullshit. Yeah, but like, it's I'll like just... 150 bucks for a, for a year. Yeah, which is bullshit. Yeah. yeah. I- I'm saying if you made it 50 bucks a year, people will actually spend money and you will get more people. So like your revenue might actually roughly be the same, but more users. And then you could upsell them here and there. Well, I think it's a matter of them just following what Adobe did. It was like, mm. wait till you got everyone on board mm. and then be like, fuck you, take this. And yeah. Then, there's something that's like, I seen the other day that's kind of like combating Adobe at the moment, thank fuck. Yeah. I can't remember the name of it. Yeah. But if, if I they, did, I'd put it in the link and you could buy yeah. it. <laughs> they, they call my cousins. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, there's a, there's a new program. There's a new program, like a, a suite of programs that are pretty much all of Adobe except for Premiere and it's like a fraction of the price. But you get the first six months free to test it out and... Oh, someone in Sydney, bro, I just went, went in the shop. I have got it. it Tell me 50 bucks, put cracked version of Adobe Suite on my laptop. Not the old school one? Yeah. yeah. No, it's like the new one. Like, I don't even know what year it is. But Can you still get new cracked? I don't think you could. Yeah. I thought the subscription kind of like came that. No, I don't know how he did it. He, I had to leave my laptop with him for a day. Yeah. It was scary. <laughs> but I just like reset any everything. It was a brand new laptop yeah, in a way. Fresh laptop, do that. Fresh yeah. laptop. I'm like, do whatever you want. And now I only edit videos on it. I'm like, I can't, I can't, I don't know what these cunts have put on it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. I used to get that, like the old, the old school Adobe Premiere Pro. Don't sue me. Like it was before I was any good. I was 17. I can steal programs <laughs> at 17. Fuck yeah. you. Um, but for like skate vids and stuff. And I was like, this is the best thing ever. But there was no way I was affording it. Yeah. Like 500 bucks. Imagine a 17-year-old trying to spend 500 on a video program. It was like, what are you? 
One, how do you have the money? That two, two in that time or back in that day? That was when I was like 17. Yeah, but how long was that? That's what I'm saying. Oh, like, like 17 years ago. Kids can probably spend 500 now. It's like people don't care about money. 500, yeah. Or uh, not. I think if they're in the same situation I was, nah. Yeah, okay. They're still broke kids. Fair, fair. Yeah. Yeah. But I just think that the value of money, like I'm not talking about buying value of money. I'm just thinking spending value of money has gone down. People are just like, yeah, dude. Like, like, look at me. When I first got here as a student, I was like counting every dollar. I'm like, I'm not going to pay for water. you need, dude. No, nah, dude, because it was it was a new thing. Mm. You have so much scarcity as a student or at that point in time. <clears throat> now, I have bills to pay. Like, I'm not going to be working for the next two months. I'm going away, this, that. I have bills to pay, but I'm like, you know, yeah, whatever. You figured it like, out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Th- th- that's what I'm saying. Like, people figure it out. But I think a lot of 17, 18-year-olds as well and now, like, they, they just know that something better is going to come. So they're like, yeah, whatever, 500 bucks, dude. I don't know. No? I, I, yeah. I find it hard to think that that could be the case. Mm. Just because, like, I was so dead shit broke and I had a job and shit. Yeah. So, I imagine if, yeah, I don't know. I think it's like a, like, sport kids, yeah. Kids that like don't have a brain. But I think mm. it's like, the way you probably grew up was like, you know, scarcity. So, you thought about it and it mattered a lot. Correct. I felt that way when I grew up. I was just like, so I fucking, all the dollars matter. And I still, like, it's been that for so long that it's so ingrained in my head that even when I've got money, I'm like, it's hard for me to spend it. Yeah, but you would still have had something even when it was, like, so scarce. Like, there was, there might have been few things where you're like, you don't think. Like, for me, it was RC cars. Like, if there is an RC car, brother, I'm getting it. Like, I don't have money, doesn't matter. I need this shit. For some, for kids now, it's shoes, hats. Dumb like, shit. Yeah, dumb yeah. shit, but they don't care. These kids, I was working at Macca's, they would walk into the store with like like Jordans, this, that, limited edition, $600, $800. I'm like, dude. And then well, go back. The kids change. I hung out with back and they would yeah. rack that shit. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were like, we can't afford it, so we're going to steal it. We're yeah. just going to roll cunts for it. Shit. So them cunts that were getting out of their parents' board, my mates would just be like, give us your shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's what it was. Man, I've never touched wood, man. I've never been held at a gunpoint with like, to give anything, bro, I'm giving everything. Like, fucking to be fair, yeah. you're in Australia. Gunpoint. Oh, in India as well. In India as well. Like, have, not, they got guns, not, have they got guns in India? But, like, they, they'll come and scare you. Like, six, seven people, like, surround you. And, like, yeah. Yeah, he's, like, knives. Yeah, shit. But knives or just, like, some cunt that will, like, start punching you. And be like, I'm taking your shit. Mm. All right. India also has a thing, like, ethical robbers. Like, it's really funny. Like, if they come to you and they ask you to open your wallet, you open, there's, like, no money. They're, like... Just have a good night, man. Like, <laughs> I'm not even kidding you. They're like, we don't want to have a fast use. Like, because they usually put cover the face with yeah. like a shawl is what we call it. Uh, neck scarf. So they wear it around. Just, yeah. This much is visible. And then they're like, oh, what you and you're like, dude, like, hey, man, just salary got paid. Don't have money. They're like, yeah, man, have a good night. Hey, like, yeah. I, I reckon that's like a numbers game because in India, there's so many people. It's yeah. like, don't rob the poor. Yeah. Don't be a dickhead. Yeah. There's always someone rich around the corner. Yeah. So it's yeah. just like, don't burn it by just getting all these little... And like, to be fair, you set off the wrong match with a broke person. Mm. I might just be like, that's the last of my money and I'm, my kid's going to die. That's it. I'm going to kill you. Oh, and then there's another thing. We have also have like quite a lot of people are like religious in India. So they also often bring religion into it. Okay. Like I still remember like... Uh, Someone was like fooling us or like scamming us when I was a kid. I'm with my mom and my mom, my mom literally said that. So she's Muslim and she said that Allah will punish you. And bro, this guy like just his whole colors and flavors and his personality change. And he just did the right thing he had to do, which was like. It's just charges. it worked. Exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. fear of God, man. Like it, it was something around going from point A to point B. And we were promised like. 80 rupees and then we reach over there and he's like yeah that'll be like 200 rupees and I was like well, wait what and she's like yeah he, and then he goes like no I meant like 80 rupees each and then we had to wait and she's like no I asked you and then and then my mom just said that all oh. and then this guy's like all right it's like oh and then he, he's also Muslim so he just did like that and it's like fucking hell man it's like mom is a gangster <laughs> yeah figured it out I wish yeah. oh, oh man I would love to be like in a in a situation like that and be like oh bro God will punish you and they'll be like oh you know what? Keep it. <laughs> you can keep your shit. I'm not going to roll you today. I've never seen a white person copping that. Eh? They're just like, God will... F- I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> but there should be something where white people think about it. What is something that 
They're like, okay, uh, is ABBA alive? ABBA? Yeah, you mean she, the Swedish fucking pop band? Yeah. She, uh, they're alive? I, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I think so. I think worth finding. Like, yeah, if like to a white person, you're like, oh, man, Ab- Abba's going to die. They're like, fuck. Abba, Abba will be ashamed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, something like that. There needs to be something, some white guilt that, that would like do it for you. I don't know, man. I mean, for me, no. Like, I'm not robbing people anyway. But for God, definitely not. Mm. Like, there is like gangsters that are God loving, but they're like, shut up, can't you? Don't know what you're talking about. I'm trying to think like. Bikey Jesus. What's Bikey Jesus? Like <laughs> Bikey Jesus. Yeah, like it's the mechanic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're not gonna repair your bike properly. Oh fuck. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know. What's Eshe fucking Eshe Hindu god or something like that? Oh yeah, Nikes. Yeah. Like like Yeezy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, Yeezy will look down upon you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Kanye West will never make another drop. It's like, oh, oh. Travis Scott will hate your guts yeah. and never design another shoe with Nike. They're like, oh, sorry, forgive us. Curse will think you're a gronk. <laughs> <laughs> something, man. They're, they're, yeah. they're, that's quite funny, actually. There should be something there. <laughs> Just imagine that, eh? Someone, some Esho is trying to roll you and be like, bro, mate, a cursor. He'll think you're a gronk if you take my shit. Oh, nah, ba. Nah, ba, da. Take it back, hey. Fuck you, hey, hey, dog, hey. Like, like, imagine cops started doing it over here. Like, they pull you off and you're drunk driving. They're like, mate, if you do this ever again. We will put a ban on you from ever visiting Bali and getting that Buddha tattoo. <laughs> and then the guy's like, fuck. You'll be banned right. from Bintang for life, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, fuck, no, man. Yeah, yeah, Don't something. There should be something like that. I think everyone will have something. Chris the Broke Franklin won't think you're cool anymore. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. no. That's my whole career, mate. Yeah. <laughs> oh, just for drink driving. That's it. Your mum said bad. Oh, fuck. Disappointed me, mum. Yeah. <laughs> Mum, anything could be like th- I think that that's an interesting that there should be questionnaire to realize what people's like breaking thing is. Yeah, what 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 would you be upset about if they that that figure or person hated you? As in, I can't think for me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> should be something like I'm. I'm just saying there should be a questionnaire like mates can have it with each other. Like, okay, you are banned from ever buying a Funko Pop your whole life. I didn't buy that. Oh yeah, fuck <laughs> <it>. <laughs> that was a gift for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> something something there I think the, the only thing that would like upset me is if someone was like oh your kids think you're a dog like oh. if my kids thought I was a dog I'd be like yeah that's pretty crap but then for me to be a dog to my kids yeah it would have to be something I did to them specifically that it would have to be me doing it to them yeah because they, they can like differentiate that shit because they've heard people talk shit about me and they're mm. still like, no, nah, that's, he's obviously not that guy. Yeah. So. I would just like to think if someone ever goes up to my kids and says, your dad is, dad is a dog, they're like, yeah, he's a fucking alpha dog. Woof, woof. <laughs> like, they're oh, like, yeah, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I think then I'll be like, yeah, I've oh. raised my kids right. I actually, on the way to pick you up today, mm. I was having this thought in the car. Yeah. Similar to this. It was like, um, because like all these OnlyFans mums out there, like their kids must just be, Fucking copping it at school. Like, imagine if you... I, I know what I would have been like if I found out someone's mum had OnlyFans at school. <laughs> I'd be like, bro, I've been pulling it to your mum so hard. The hardest come I've ever had was when uh, your dad came in your mum's <laughs> ass that time. Just fucking roping on the wall. Just, oh, God. Like, I just had that in my head. Uh, and then I was like, man, I wonder if my kids think that me doing a podcast, like when they become teenagers and someone listens to it, they were like... <laughs> Man, your dad's a fucking idiot. Yeah. 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 And then I was like, how could I how could I help my kids solve that problem? And I was like, I know exactly how to fix this problem. I, I instantly came up with the car. I was like, so I'm gonna word my kids up with this if they get to a point where they're like, this person thinks you're a fuckhead because of shit said in the podcast. I'll be like, all right, get me a picture of them. I'm gonna make a whole bit about them. Not Say who they are because I'm obviously don't want to get caught teasing kids because that's going to be fucked. But I'm going to go on stage. I'm going to pretend that someone in the crowd looks exactly like that person and I'm going to rip him to fucking shreds. shreds yeah. Then I'm going to put it as a clip up and you can go to school and be like, that's about you, cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I also have, I have a feeling like, yes, like, yeah, OnlyFans are a bit extreme, but I think... Not even extreme, man. I think there is empathy. Like, kids, which is fucking weird, man. Like, yeah. kids have empathy. So, I, as long as someone is bringing food to the table, 
whatever regard, I think kids would have respect to that. Oh no! Like if if you, you gotta, can, you got to think of the nasty side. Like you, yeah. There's gonna be people like, oh yeah, your mum's a fucking baller. She's making money for cock and cock, sick. But then there's I mean, gonna it's, be the- it's frustrating, of course. Like as as a kid, it would be frustrating. But I'm saying it's it's so much different than like if if your dad is a garbage man, example, and your mom I, is an only fan. One hundred percent would have teased cunts about the dad being a garbage man. Back Correct, in the right? So so it's like everyone's gonna tease it, but it's. I think it's getting normalized to a point where it's just looked at another way of just someone hustling to make money. Yeah, but anything can be teased. Like any job. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, like, the OnlyFans one's just easy. Yeah. Because it's like, I've got proof yeah. that your mom's a whore kind of thing. <laughs> you know? Like, I fucking, I've bashed cunts when they said I fucked my mom at school before when I was a kid. I was like, they're like, you fuck your mom. And I was like, Fuck you! And like, Dude, I no, broke some cunt's arm once because I'm of that. not kidding you. I'm actually gonna start my own OnlyFans. Yeah. This is the idea because a lot of people have their link tree and they put OnlyFans and yeah, yeah, something yeah. stupid. I'm gonna actually start my OnlyFans. I'm gonna start traveling with a fan. Okay, <laughs> and it's just gonna be just me enjoying nice like trail. nice scenic views <laughs> with the fan running in the background. Nice. Yeah, yeah, and like because I don't have any head on my hair, it would, the fan would just be there. So like, there's a bit of ruffling hair on my palm, <laughs> on my wrist or something like that. Yeah. Just could be pure stupid. What you should do is like the the cover the border photo up top is just make sure like you've got no shirt on, and so it like cops the top of your shoulder. So it's like <laughs> so it looks like you're gonna be naked in it. Yeah. And then as soon as they've paid their monthly fee, they Actually get in. Have really good collarbones. I could do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I could do that. And when they get in with their monthly fee, it's like. <laughs> Fans in hot Pictures spots. Of fans. Like Havels 100 is a really good fan. <laughs> You're just reviewing fans just in really hot spots. Hottest day of summer in Sydney <laughs> by the beach. This beach date's 40 degrees and this fan, oh my God, it's getting the wind so close past my ear. I can hear the whizzing past and it's gone right up my nose, giving me the coolest thing. To upgrade this fan a little bit, what I've done is sprinkled some water on top. <laughs> and then I'll have comments like this. I'm like, this fan's air is the the fan actually produces air that is so cool that it invites all the hot chicks. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm gonna do it. You know what? Laugh. Yeah, I reckon it'll work. Yeah, because it's like stupid. you 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 trick some cunts, <laughs> but then if it's funny enough, they'll be yeah. like, "All right, I'm in." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is good. You want to be on my only fans? And she's like, "Well, I'm like, you just gotta look in the fan. <laughs> yeah. You just gotta get the wind blowing in your hair from the fan, <laughs> and then hire some hot chicks to do it." And be like, "That's how it starts. It's like a zoom in of them, like." Oh, Oh, and then it just zooms out to the fan. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I'm writing this. This is fucking sick. I'm def- I can definitely see myself do this. <laughs> I like it. I've thought about starting an OnlyFans as well. Yeah, what's your idea? Oh, just dick tricks, but. What? Dick tricks. What's that? Like puppetry with my dick. Because, <laughs> you know, like you've heard of puppetry with a penis, right? I can do all their tricks and more. <sighs> so I was like, man, I just... but I. <laughs> I didn't know what to call it. It's like dick trick sounds funnier, but it's like a swear word. Yeah. Pop through the penis. And I was like, man, what was the other one I came up with? Like, um, oh, it was something to do with disfiguring the member or something like that. No, it wasn't that because that's I didn't want to disfigure it. Something weird where I was like, oh, I can get away with saying that where it's mm. not pop through the penis. It's not dick tricks, but it's clearly me fucking with my dick. Yeah. But then I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> I'm like, as long as you're not showing your face, I think you'd be fine. I mean, oh, now they've heard, dude, they'll know it's you. I've got a fucking elephant's head tattooed to my dick. Like, <laughs> it doesn't matter if I don't show my face. It's going to be like, that's him. <laughs> I've seen that dick before. All the chicks that I've been with, it's like, yeah, we know that. Not even the chicks, man. Like, when I first got it done, I pretty much walked around my pants down for like a year. <laughs> Straight to All everyone. of Rockingham is just like, elephant man. <laughs> so, like, there's no escaping it now. It's there. <laughs> So, yeah, Yo, no. th- this is so random. Remember we went to Frio, like we did that gig and then there was this drunk chick. Oh, the blind chick after. Yeah. yeah. Fuck. And did you see, do you remember the title she had on under, on her lip? No, what was the lip one? Fuck. She j- just just said, come. Yeah, oh, I did say, come, hey. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe we, I forgot we about that. about tattoo. tattoos and I've just, I had two tattoos at that time and like, I, you know, I've got something written and then... She started talking about titles. Like she, she's like, you like titles? I'm like, yeah. She's like, what's your coolest title? I was like, oh, you know, I got them on my shoulder. She's like, sick. She's like, you, you want to see my coolest title? I was like, what? And like, I don't know. She just drops the lips. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that she had a lip done because I've got my lip as well. Oh, uh, yeah? What does yeah. yours say? Mine's just a D because it hurts. Like, I don't know if you're saying it like that. Fucking. <laughs> Fucking just a little D in my lip. 
It sucked, man. I got that done when I was like 18. <laughs> sucked so bad. <laughs> you can't even get rid of it, eh? I wanted to get... Nah, I don't even want to. Yeah. I wanted to get dark one in my lip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then he did one line and I was like, this is meant to fade in a year? Mm. I don't like this. Yeah. And then he did the second one and it was like 15 bucks in Bali. And I was like, just have your $15, dude. <laughs> I don't... If it's only going to last a year and it's in my lip and it hurts as bad... Don't fuck that also a Bali fucking tattoo. Like, it's like mm. I've had two, yeah, two three turned out well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The elephant was done in Bali <laughs> because here I already got ball tax on it. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. So the the couple of places I went to, they were like, "Oh yeah, we'll charge a ball tax." I was like, "What do you mean?" Well, they're like, "Look where you're doing it. Mm. We got to pay. You got to charge extra for there." And I was like, "Oh, how much? Like wow. six hundred bucks." And I was like, "Bro, six hundred bucks." Yeah, just in ball tax and then tattoo on top. For that you could fly to Bali, get the tattoo and come back. Correct. Is but that right? I didn't. I did other shit in Bali as well. Yeah. yeah. But they wouldn't do it in their shop. They came to my hotel room. Wow. Yeah, and I've got photos of me laying on the floor on a mattress. It wasn't <laughs> even on a bed. It was on the floor on a mattress on my hotel room <laughs> with some Balinese <laughs> bloke tattooing my dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking hell, man. I, I'm yet to go to Bali, but I know I'm going to have the sickest time. It's man, so different. Yeah. So different. I went there... Two months ago, mm. in July, I got my knee tattooed there while I was there. Yeah. Fuck, that sucked. But um, like what Changu is, is what Kudu used to be. Mm. And so Kudu is like an old person's village now. Yeah. Seminyak was never the size. It is massive. Kudu is mm. massive. Changu is crazy. But it's like so different. It used to be like this little like beach kind of fucking party town where everything was done with like repair. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Now, everywhere has FPOS. Mm. You've got these like tiny little fucking markets all down the street. Everyone's got FPOS. And you're like, oh, this is fucked. Mm. You're like, why do I even have this repair? Like, what is this? And it's like Monopoly money because yeah. it's like a million is $100. <laughs> yeah. So, it's like you've got this. I called it tipping repair. Yeah. So, it's like, man, this is like being in a strip club. Yeah. The only reason you've got this is to tip people. You pay them your real money, your card, and you give them some tipping repair. Like, you did a good job. Thank you. Mm-hmm. It's fucked. Mm-hmm. But it's still good over there. Yeah, man. I'm looking forward to it. I'm probably trying for Japan next year, though. I'm gonna, I want to go to Japan in December. Oh, I was thinking about August, but someone told me that the blooming season is where you want to go, which is April, go March snow. to May. Snow is what I want to go for. I couldn't tolerate the cold, man. I'd but come yeah. back a sick man. I can't tolerate cold. <laughs> I really can't. You've never seen snow and you don't want it? Never. I, I want to, but I'd rather do it in a comfort like Melbourne, ah, or like go okay. somewhere in New South Wales. Like, yeah, I suppose I you're living over there, so correct. I don't want to go in the middle, like a, to a fucking foreign land, and it's already like, what is the word? When it's too much, it's already overwhelming. Yeah, and on top of that, you're like, okay, it's gonna be so cold, like your dick is gonna shrink to like <laughs> two centimeters, and on top of that, you gotta layer up, layer up, layer up, and pay money to be in a fucking terribly cold place. So you like the, that's the adventure, mate. Nah, bro, look at me, man. Like, I, I get this compliment a lot from, like, my parents and their friends and people who are my parents' age. They say I'm, like, an old soul. Like, I, they say I've been, I've lived on this earth before. Because, bro, nah, man. I, I'm not, no. I'm really simple. You, you're like, what do you want to eat? My answer is always the same. Butter chicken. That's it. You're like, oh, but, like, we're in a five-star hotel. Oh, you sure? Or chili pepper chicken. No. Oh, bro. <laughs> I had it recently, and that was my last time having it. Really? Yeah, I'm done with it. Why? Bro, because it's the oil, man. It's too much. I don't know what you think about this. Had it on Friday night last week. Hosted windmill. Went with Marcus. Have you met Marcus? He's a Brazilian no. comic. He's in and out. Uh, caught up with him after so long. Went, had chili pepper chicken. Bro, I slept at one. I woke up nine in the morning. My whole room smells like chili pepper chicken oil. Well, right? you just farting it out. Fuck, I don't know. Even, no, I don't even fart in my sleep. Like, because how do I know that? Fucking, I don't. But yeah. when I was, I was in a living relationship. I was told I snore, but I don't fart in my sleep. It's, fuck yeah, that's a win. That should be a green flag on the fucking dating profiles. Um, <laughs> don't fart in sleep. Don't fart in sleep. So woke up at nine. Whole room smells like fucking chili pepper chicken. I'm staying with someone, so I was like, I don't, I can't leave the room like this. Like this is awful. But what if Open what if the they window. bring chili pepper chicken home and ate it, and that's what it was? No, it was definitely me. Okay. Open the window, smell is going out. After a while, smell is gone. The room doesn't stink, and then I go to, it's like fuck, I stink of chili pepper chicken. I feel like I've literally bathed 
Really? Chili pepper chicken, yeah. It was so oily. Then I took a shower, applied perfume, applied my lotion, everything. Ten minutes later, fuck. Back. It's not even my, 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 it's not even my armpit, it's my whole body. So when I'm sweating, the, the, the BO that is coming out is chili pepper fucking chicken, bro. Man, I've never had that from food. I've only had it from yeah. alcohol. I took three showers that day, man. <laughs> because I had a gig that night. Like Saturday night was the big ethnic comedy show. I was like, yeah. you know, this is a big one. For I have to feel good. I have to look good. I have to smell good. So I took three showers, man. Jeez. Stayed, uh, just consume water the whole day. So, you know, I just keep perspiring. It gets out of my body. Every time I went to take a piss, bro, the fucking toilet smelled like chili pepper chicken. I'm not wow. even kidding you. It was like just so much. I've, I've had piss smell like meat. Before? Oh, yeah, 100%. When you eat, like, heaps of meat? Yeah, yeah. For me, that happens with seafood. Like, if you have salmon or some shit, like, definitely salmon. You're like, oh, that is how fresh the salmon was. Fishy dick. Yeah, fishy dick. <laughs> yeah. Cheese, baby, yeah. Ah, okay. So, you're off the chili pepper chicken now. And, bro, like, because I had it that night, I was like, man, why did I do that to myself? So, I'm done with chili pepper chicken. And what else did I recently have? Pff, fuck, I had something else as well. I was like, dude, I'm so done with this. Never again in my life. A like, birth food or... Just, I think it was just some sort of food. Like, I think muffins, I've had that for muffins a while, for a while now. Sweet as well, man. Like, I found my sweet now, which is Cole's Double Choc Chip Cookies. Oh, yeah. Like, pack of six, $3.50. Perfect, bro. Perfection. That's it. And sometimes they over-roast it as well. So, I, I go and, like, I check the boxes and, like, people are giving me their, like... They, they're all the same. I'm like, they're not the same. You just don't know. You're talking to a connoisseur right now. Shut up. Right? I eat this every fucking day. Every fucking day, man. <laughs> so that that's one thing I can't let go of. But sweet wise, man, I'm like really trying to cut back. Indian sweets yeah. and that. Cakes, carrot cake is the so I'm like like as I'm growing old, I'm like deciding like these this is exactly what I want. Like yeah. you're like sweets, I'm like I give you three options ice cream, cookie, or carrot cake. Or Indian sweets for. Anything outside that I'll have to think about. Like I won't be as keen. Yeah. Yeah. So like that that's where I'm headed. And sugar is the one thing I fucking wish I could just always cut out. Oh, I'm the I, same. I'll have breaks and then I'll come back and I'm like, fuck. Cold turkey, hey? Yeah. Yeah, I have to. If I don't quit at cold turkey, I mean I deal with that week of like nightmare fuel because I'm not like I don't have to have sugar every day at the moment. Yeah. So I had I and caffeine I've got quit as well. Mm. But that week Like energy drinks and caffeine or coffee? No, nah, just Coke. Mm. Coke's the the one for me. I don't drink coffee or any drinks, but Coke. Yeah. And just just black sugar water. Mm. <laughs> but that man, like the week getting off that is fucked. Like a heroin ate, like passing out, she's like half awake. Like, oh man, headaches, hell. I get hell shitty. Really? With everyone. <clears throat> wow. Yeah, I'm like the just like set off, and it's fucked because like I have to like <laughs> not do it when I've got the kids for the weekend at the start. I've got like if I have it Monday. Like that's the, the last time mm. I'll have like a Pepsi or Max in the fridge or something like is a, all right, if I start getting a shitty and I start being an angry dad, drink a Pepsi. Yeah. Just drink that. Yeah. Get the caffeine, get a little bit of sugar, let your body do whatever it's stupid shit is. And then Monday you fucking, you're back on and you can start being a normal fucking human being. Man, I tried to stay away from sugar. There's a good mate of mine. He's one of the housemates I'm moving in with. Bro, he just told me this is how he gave up sugar. He just started thinking, like, why is he eating it? Oh, I ask like, that still, but I'm like, because I want it. It's fucked. Yeah. And, man, like, it's like, if you, because that's just humans, right? The moment you bring uh, repercussions, is that what it's called? Like, you know, actions yeah. will have, like... Consequences. Consequences. The moment you bring consequences into picture, then we are like, oh, well, ooh. So, for me, the consequences of having cookies would be, like, I can't sleep properly. I'm a bit lost. I'm in my own fucking... I'll get a breakout on my face. I'm like, well, why, why am I doing it? So do you find that it works to give yourself like this is the, the consequence? Because for me, for, even then. For me, I'm trying to just put a stop now. All right, have yeah. one cookie. Fuck yeah. Like learn to enjoy. Yeah. Because, okay, now we, we're going to go deep into this. I also think that it has to do with like scarcity again. Like because it's like a power food. Like when I was a kid, oh, you whatever you I was going it, through. So you had to eat them all. Yeah, yeah. number one. Yeah. Number two, the moment I had it, life felt better man like yeah. it felt safe so then that's like a coping mechanism as well for a lot of people eating is a coping mechanism it's a comfort thing everyone yeah. not just you bro humans oh, no, bro. I'm, I, I, I've pissed myself off with it because I like wow. get really angry about some shit yeah and then I'm like mm, maybe I'll get Maccas and I'm like mm. no you won't yeah. you will not get Maccas you fat fuck <laughs> like stop going to get some coke and shit to be like this will fix it because it's not going to fix it yeah you're just going to 
eat it and be like, yeah, dope. Now I'm fat again. But you can try to like switch gradually. So what I did to get off sugary drinks, I'm done with like, I don't even like fizzy drink. No, my thing. Never Like it was temporarily. This is how I got out of it. I switched to cordial. All right. Yeah. And I would just make a whole glass. I was having cordial to, once every two days. And then I started reducing the quantity of cordial. Yeah, it weaned yourself off. Yeah, and then it just became water, man. Like, now I want something sweet. I'm trying to, like, this morning I woke up, I was like, fuck, I want something sweet. Had some pistachios, call it a day. I like how that's your version of sweet. <laughs> it's not. Uh, yeah. It's like you like you. Because I'm not going to lie, for the last five minutes, I just have cold shock chip cookies in my mind, man. <laughs> And I'm I'm well, gonna go. I got you there. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna get it somehow today. And like, how, how, oh, I'm going for ice cream tonight. So I can see there you go. Yeah. So th- there's a better reward than just having cookies. Just sitting in my house, being miserable, and having cookies. Yeah. I'm gonna have go out on a ni- meet a nice person tonight. Have some ice cream with her. Fuck yeah, that sounds much better than just. So yeah, like you just have to like find your ways. Like yeah, you, yeah. Fuck yeah, have Coca Cola, but maybe when the kids are over, if what? they're also having it, have one with them. So you're not drinking and they're having Coke. Everyone's having Coke. Oh no. I saw my kids from drinking Coke. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So you have to finish it by the time they get here? Nah, so yeah. like, I try, I'm like, they're like, can we have one? I'm like, you know that I don't even want to be having this. Mm. Like, I've explained to them, I'm like, I'm a dickhead. Yeah. I don't want to be drinking this. And then I was like, you're allowed to call me a dickhead if you mm. see me drinking a Coke. Yeah. And if I ever have to go buy a Coke around them, they're yeah. just like, what are you doing? Yeah. I was like, you know what I'm doing. They're like, you're a dickhead. Don't do it. Mm. You're not allowed to do it. And then they'll try and like bribe me. Like, if you do it, we have to do this. And I'm like, no, I'm just a dickhead. <laughs> Man, and I'm like, I get addicted to things really easy. That is why I've never done drugs any sort. Yeah. And I don't want to do it. Because you reckon you get sucked in. Oh, fuck. And people are like, oh, weed doesn't work that way. I'm like, no, no, you don't know how I work. Okay. And I know like if Man, I get I've, something. I've met people very much addicted to weed. Oh, yeah. Uh, to be honest. Most people who do weed are addicted to weed. They're just in denial. If you smoke weed every day, yeah, that's that's an addict. Yeah, you're like, no, I'll just love it every day. It's or, or like it's right. <laughs> I don't think addiction is even. Oh, is it? Or or the more so the thought that you want it every Tuesday seven pm, every Thursday seven pm. Is that also addiction or that's just discipline? I think no. Nah, discipline is being able to have consistent time off without a time frame. Mm. If you go, I can have it now, but I'm gonna have it in a week. Yeah, you're disciplined, so you don't have it in that week, but you're having to have it at that time frame. Like you've already promised yourself in the future when you're going to have it. So you're not – like when I am when I call myself addicted to Coke yeah, is when I've got to be like, oh, I can only have one a week. But then yeah. I'm like, that's when I'm going to have it this week. I've already made – I've made the decision I'm having it. So therefore, I'm addicted because I have to have it. It's mm. not like, oh, there's a Coke there. I'm not going to have it. Doesn't matter. When's the next one? I don't, doesn't matter. Yeah. That's when I'm like, I'm out. Mm. But I think most of the time when it comes to drugs, I've got a whole theory on alcoholism. Go right? for it. So yeah. this, you'll, you'll like this. People that are like alcoholics that are addicted to alcohol, they're not actually addicted to alcohol. They're addicted to what happened when they started drinking alcohol. So when – you know how you've got them like sad alcoholics that are just like they drink every day and then they cry and their life's fucked and it sucks. Yeah. They weren't like that when they started drinking. Mm. They were probably happy. They would go out and drink with their friends and it would have been fun. And they were like, yeah, drinking equals fun. But it's not drinking equals fun. It's you with your friends equals fun. But you just drank because that was your only hobby. So then you can, you've kept drinking as thinking that's your fun part. But you've stopped hanging out with your friends because you're a sad cunt. Because your life's gotten shit. And you've never tried to fix that because you're trying to fix it by having fun. Which is drinking. Which isn't the fun part. See, for me, I'm of the opinion it's an escape mechanism. Yeah, it's the same thing. Okay, like, I don't, I've never tried to connect the dots because I haven't, I've been drinking for fucking four years, man. And, like, the most I've drank was this year at a mate's birthday. Like, and most when I say, no, nah, I've drank more than that, but, like, five drinks, bro. Four drinks really? and two shots. And I was high as a kite. Yeah, you would have been blind. Yeah. Especially and, and if you don't drink fuck I, all. I wasn't doing anything. I, like, this, this is my phases. First one hour of just apologizing to everyone I'm drunk. Next three hours was just dancing in front of the TV. No one next to me. Sometimes people next to me. Yeah. Sometimes there's not even a song on. Just me dancing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then the last one, I was just going and telling everyone how much I love them. And then I'm normal. Like that. That's that's my cycle. Yeah. Uh, but I did not start drinking at a good like I had my first drink with my dad, and like 
I mean, yeah, it's like, oh, father son thing, but like, it's still awkward. Like, I didn't want my first drink to be with my dad, but it was. Yeah. Right, with my mom and my dad, and we had a drink. It's like, it's okay. So for me, if I ever get addicted to drinking, it won't be because of the memory I, or like the mental state I was in when I started drinking. That's why you're not addicted to it, dude. Correct. Correct. But like, for me, I, I think I've you're, never I think done. you're smarter than it too. Mm. Like, I think you don't go, this is going to equal that. You can go, I can solve the problem. Like, I've seen you solve problems. Yeah. For me, man, it's the awareness. I like touch would have, like, good awareness about me and my surroundings. Even when I'm drunk, like, I'm like, I know exactly what, who's doing what. Like, someone told me to do this while I'm drunk. I have memory. I don't, I've never been in the spot where I just forget what I'm doing. That is why also I'm apologetic yeah. when I get drunk or to, when I'm not in my senses. To get, like, blackout? Yeah. You drink quite a bit. Like oh, I did. Yeah. I've, I've blacked out. I black out more times than I'd like to admit. Fuck. But every time it happens, I'm annoyed because I'm like, oh, dude, what's the point of drinking to blackout? Because then yeah. you just forget shit. And I'm like, I've blacked out that much. I'm like autopilot and blackout now. Mm. So like I can function like a perfectly normal human being. You won't even know I'm drunk half the time. But you, you I'm are. I'm blind and yeah. I don't have any memory. Wow. Yeah. I copped it. I, I did like it. A couple of weekends ago, my mate was like, oh, you, you were doing this and that. And I was like, don't remember that. I got onto wine, man. Like, oh. yeah. And, and not, not just like proper wine. Yeah. There is this wine called Brown Brothers Moscato. Yeah. It's like fucking sweetest that's, thing that's ever. That's not wine, dude. Th- that's okay. like the cruises of wine. Tell that to the guy who labels it as wine I or know. the girl who labels yeah, it as but, that but wine. It's not proper wine. I used to sell wine. That's not wine. Hey, I go to the shop and I said, can I have some wine? Yeah, so in what a, bo- in a bottle said, sweet. shop. And then they said this is a sweet wine. Yeah, but if you and if you if you Moscato. speak to um if you speak to wineries, yeah, they're like Moscato's not wine. Yeah, yeah. Because how Moscato is made is they add so much extra shit to it to make it so it's so sweet and all that oh, shit. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. It's not like wine where it's like we just fucking press these grapes and ferment them and shit. Mm. Moscato's got crap added to it. Okay. Mm. Either way, it tastes nice, but oh, yeah. it's the not it's the sweetest of all wines. <laughs> oh, so sweet, man! Yeah. So I got addicted to it. Like I would just like, and when I say addicted, like every time I would, you know, like us as adults, we just open the fridge like ten times a day. Yeah. When it's your day off, look inside. There's nothing, and then you close it. Or there was always Moscato, and I would open the bottle, take a small sip, close the bottle, put it back. Because it was sweet and it was yeah. alcoholic. How could you do that, Yuck. <laughs> oh, so good, man. And I, I got hooked onto it, and then. I got off it and I had Moscato on Sunday night after two and a half years. I was like, oh yeah. And then I was having Moscato with people who are like enjoying proper wine, like yeah, Prosecco yeah. bubbles. Been like, That's a wine. They hated me, yeah, bro. Because it's not They're wine. Like, who does this? I was like, hey, for me, if I'm going to have some wine, might as well have oh, something. Yeah. I like. They're like, this is not fucking wine. <laughs> this is grape juice at its best. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking got extra shit to it. Yeah. Man, when I was selling wine, because I hate wine. I hate it. Mm. When I was selling it, they were like, oh, you got to do a wine tasting. And I was like, oh, do I have to? Yeah. And they're like, what do you mean? How are you selling this? I was like, I'm not selling it because I like it. I'm selling it because they like it. Correct. That's how sales works, you fucking dicks. Yeah. No, yeah. like, that's not, I was like, honestly, I, I wasn't just three months that job, but I was like, oh, I'll do the wine tasting just to please you people. Yeah. And then I did six whites and six reds. Spat them all out. So I was like, I'm not, Shit. I'm not fucking drinking this. I was like, swill it. What, what's your choice of drink, beer, eh? No, no, no. I can't drink beer at all. Wait, wait. Let, Jack and Coke? No. Rum is preferably. Rum. But spirits yeah. is. I, I remember we went to that uh, Sneaky Tony's. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sick place, man. Yeah, very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Rum's the go-to. But spirits, I'll drink it. Yeah. Oh, I got to get you that Indian rum, man. Oh, yeah, yeah you do. Yeah. You do. Fuck. I'm fucking keen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll get it. Next time in fourth in Feb. Yeah. I'll bring it with me. Yeah. Fuck yes. Yeah. But yeah, like, oh, man. The whole way through, I did these six whites and six reds, and they're like, what's your, what have you noticed? What's the difference? And they were, every single one was a different, like, flavor or whatever the fuck you want to call it, like, cab salves to fucking Chardonnays, to everything. And I was like, they all taste like shit. Man, I've, tr- I've, been, I've switched to uh, non alcoholic cider. You know what sucks is the one I went for, Scapegoat Zero, it's out of stock. I think it's they've closed the product. Apparently, I was the only kind buying it. <laughs> like every shop I went to always had it, and they just all had the final one. Yeah. So if I knew that, I would have just stocked up on it because I love it. It tastes 50% like cider, 0% alcohol. 
ten dollars you get six bottles. So, oh, so it's not like alcohol price. Like, no, have you seen them non-alcoholic ones that are like the same price? Hell, man, yeah. Well, more expensive. Not even the same price. Yeah. Like you go for hips normal or something. It's more expensive than standard beer. I'm like, what? Might as well fucking have beer then. Genius marketing. They've just gone. You can't not drink beer, so we're gonna sell you beer at a beer price. You're like, but it's not beer. It's not even got the tax on it. Yeah. Can't like I seen a um a bottle of gin, Gordon's gin, zero percent. Mm. And it was like 50 bucks. And I was like, hey, water. it's yucky water. And you've got no tax on it. Because the tax on a fucking 700 ml bottle of spirit that's 37.5% is like 20 bucks or more. But you're selling it with no alcohol in it mm. without that tax. I'm like, pure profit, dogs. Sell it for cheaper. You're trying to encourage alcohollessness? They're not, but they're like, Hey, we got to capitalize on this because we're losing money over here. And the truth is, if like if we think about it, like from an ethical perspective, if prices of non-alcoholic stuff that tastes like alcohol was cheaper, people would actually make the switch. Oh, 100%. Actually 100%. make the switch. You know, yeah. like yeah, that, that's what I did. I switched to like I still love cider, but for me, cider and ginger beer from the tap. Otherwise, I I hate it from the can. It just doesn't hit me. Somersby is good, but otherwise, all of them just like doesn't feel the same. Yeah. Um, but man, this 0% one, you go to a party, you just have a bottle in your hand. No one knows you're a pussy. You're just, just having a good time. I like to really hammer down that I'm a pussy. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. But they I, know when I When I'm in. not drinking, I'm like, water. <laughs> you like oh. that, cunt? I'm drinking water. I, I'm, the, I'm that guy. Water from the red glass. Like the party glass. <laughs> no, nah, like, yeah. I mean like a bottle of water. Like oh, I want to be clear that I'm not drinking. Sophisticated, no. Nah. Like I suck. <laughs> no, I, I, I try to blend in. Yeah. Nah, I don't. I don't like it makes it easier because if I drink piss, I'm a, like a loose unit. Mm. If I'm not drinking piss and I'm not being a loose unit, people are like, what's going on? But this is what my no dad, piss. this is what I, uh, nobody, what? Nobody? No piss. They don't know. No piss, they're, like, yeah. they're like, they accept that I'm not a loose unit if I'm not drinking. They're like, oh, you're just going to be less of a fucked cunt. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, man. Like, this is what I learned from my dad. He does this. He will have that red glass, okay? Whiskey, Coke, whatever he's having. And then every time someone's like, hey, you want to refill? He's like, yeah, I'll, I'll pour one myself. Just go and just top up like drinks, like sometimes water, like Coke. And he's like, by the end, he's just, it, he's like, there's a point where it tastes like shit. But then after that, it's just Coca-Cola. No one knows. And now you don't look like the awkward guy who's like not drinking. It's like, fuck yeah, that's sick. I don't, I'm, I don't mind looking like I don't oh, doing everything. Bro, come on. You, have you been to comics fucking network? Like when comics are all hanging out at a house party, man. No, if you're not drinking, bro. I don't get invited to them things, oh, I don't think. It's hard to cope with it, man. Well, I, I find alcohol makes you tolerate humans better. Oh, yeah. yeah. 100%. Why does everyone have a drink sound Friday at work? Because yeah. they're like, fuck, man, here's a price for tolerating your boss or each other for the whole week. Have a beer on well, us. I just mean like I can hang out with you past work hours. Yeah. Because <laughs> otherwise, I'm not. <laughs> man, that's what I loved about my accounting job. Like every Friday was like the social drinks. And each team, like there was accounting team, finance team, uh fucking bookkeeping team tax team like everyone would get turns to go and like do the drinks run yeah and i had the fixed cider i would have two ciders and the date was and from 2 p.m onwards i would go and start talking to that team i was like fuck work man i've, I've already drafted all the emails i have to send yep. out and at 3 3 30 p.m i always send control enter or alt enter <laughs> And then uh, have a great weekend. So I'm like telling, I'm like, I'm not expecting a reply anymore. Like, just good yeah. luck to you, right? So I've got everything drafted. I'm like done. 2 p.m. I've, I've like, I'm so productive on Fridays. 2 p.m. I'm done. And just go talk to that team, like whatever. Just look busy. Like be doing something, but not really doing anything. Yeah. And then the moment the drinks come at 3 p.m., brother, I'm off the books, man. Like my computer is on. I'm like doing something. I'm talking to people. If they're doing it, I'm out. Just talk about clients. And that's what I learned. I don't have, to, I just don't want to work. Yeah. But I have to be there. I can't go home early. So how about we just talk about the clients? And then I just prompt it and you keep talking. I'm like, dude, I'm having a sick time. You are bitching about the client. I'm just having alcohol. Like this is as good as it just gets. not doing the boring shit anymore. Yeah. And uh, the days I would have to do the drink bro, from 12 p.m., bro, I was just hanging around. 
just asking everyone what drinks they're off, like, whatever. Anything to not be at my workstation. And I loved it, man. So that, that's and one thing I miss. One of the things I've learned about a job is like, if you hate it, just quit. Like if oh, you yeah, I did. If you don't want to do the job. Yeah, but like, I know. But then, Darcy, that's, that's the conversation, right? Like, yeah, the world's going to end. There's so much evil. You know, nothing is permanent. But I still have to pay rent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's just, yeah, but it's like find something else, you know. Find like if if you're at a job, like every job I've had, where I'm like, I'm fucking over this. Yeah, I'm just like, quit. It took me a while to get to that space where I was like, just quit it. If you don't like it, quit it. Fuck it. Oh no, or yeah, and just find a new one. Yeah, hundred percent. That, that's way, but then you also have like, you learn so much about you, right? Like to me, salary is the common to compensate you for having to deal with those responsibilities. Yeah. I don't see it as salary is something they pay to hire your services. No, no, no. Yeah. Then it's a business. To me, if you're on 180K, it means the stress that comes with it or the amount of involvement, amount of tasks you have to do is worth 180K. And the company is going to make 500K or say 500K yeah. based on your presence in the business. So, like, to me, that's what it comes down to. Like, I'm like, yeah, I don't... I. Like, I'm not liking it. Hating, hate is a big word for me. Yeah. I'm like, I don't like it, but it's all right, you know. For, like, I try to measure stress and work, ba- like, comedy and work balance by the salary I get paid. So I'm like, oh, 65K, I'm like, mm, okay. 80K, I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know what? Yeah, you can treat me with a bit of disrespect. That's all right. Saves me, gives me 15K more to invest in comedy. Fuck oh, yeah, no, I'll like, take it. Zero level of disrespect. You give me any, I'm fucking an asshole. Yeah. If I work for you and you treat me like shit, mm. fuck you, cunt. Oh, can't uh, do it. Yeah, man. I, I have that now. Yeah. But I also think that it. I'm so new to the workplace, man. Like I'm 28. I've had a corporate job like six years now. So I'm so new to the workplace to understand what how people should be treated, this and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the first few times I'd not really understand, but now I have a good clarity. If someone is wrong, I'm like, hey, dude, like, Fuck. I, I'll just say, irrespective of our relationship at work, you are never allowed to talk to me like that. We good? I've done that twice in my current role. That's very nice. Yeah. I'm like, okay, just going to ask you a simple question. What allows you to talk to me like that? I'm not confronting you, just curious. What gave you the vibe you can come and talk to me like that? And like, oh man, didn't mean to offend you. I was like, okay. Just remember this, not saying that warning or nothing. I treat you with respect, you treat me with respect. That's fair. And usually people just like, when you treat them with kindness like this, they're like, fuck man, yeah, I'm a piece of shit. I'm sorry, I'm a piece of shit. Yeah, I'm definitely not that nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was one time I went into like the manager's office at one place and I was threatening to jump on someone's head in a different department. Wow. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to fucking find them in the car park. I'm going to jump on their fucking head. I'm going to get the fuck out of them. Fuck that person. What the fuck is this place? They were like, wow, yeah. dude. No, but like that, that the reason I do that niceness is, bro, people tolerate me at work. Yeah, no, I'm that's, kidding. man, that's a smart like way to do it. Imagine a guy comes and tries 10 different jokes on you every few fucking hours. <laughs> and then like sometimes they're funny and other times they're like, dude, like, nah, man, yeah. nah. Listen, I'm working or like some shit like Leave that. Leave me alone. Yeah. yeah. And then that's also the reason why I touch wood, I don't get in trouble often at work because I'm nice to everyone. They're all nice to me. They're like, oh, he's a nice guy. Like, I'm not even kidding you. Like, the number of times my performance is bad and they're like, hey, man, you know, like, but it's good to have you around. Like, fuck yeah. yeah. You're, you're a good, good yeah, asset. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm like, that That always comes. And every job I've left, and this sucks, man. This sucks where I realize my importance is just my humor and the laughs I bring to the workplace. <laughs> because every time it's been like, hey, Shash, good luck with your future universe. We'll bring the laughs you bring, brought to the workplace. At no point has anyone said that. You're really oh, good at your job. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, uh, it'll be hard to fill in this spot. Or like, oh, the way you treat it with clients, the way you ace the meetings, you know, manage client portfolios. None of that shit. It's just you're a funny cunt. Yeah, it's like a funny cunt, man. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> but we will never come and see you at a live show. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. You're funny enough in the office, but not funny enough no, to pay a ticket to. Nah, that's, that's what I Fuck hate, you. man. you. That's what I hate. But that, that's, just, that's just it, man. Yeah. yeah. Does this happen to you at work? Like, someone's just like, now that you do comedy, they're like, oh, fucking, when can you come see you? And you're like, oh, no, I, I don't want you to be there, to be honest. I don't mind. Like, I don't give a shit if anyone comes and sees me. Yeah. Like, if someone's like, I'll oh, come see, I'm like, cool, when do you want to come? Mm. Here's the lineup. Like, here's the time. Yeah. Like, or if, if I know that there's like a better show, I'm like, come to that one instead. So I can kind of like gauge who they are. But I've only had people say, like, yeah, we'll come one time. I'm like, okay. 
Mm. I'm like, maybe wait till fringe. Man, for me, this is tricky, right? My A lot of my friends want to come and see me. And then I don't want them to pay to come see me at someone else's show, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah I get that. Because they're always welcome to come see my shows for free. Yeah. Usually, depending on where I'm doing it. Yeah. They're always allowed to come and see me. I'm like, yeah, dude, just like, I'll put your name on the door. I don't need to worry about it. But I just don't like capitalizing on your mates. Yeah, I don't, I don't see it as capitalizing mm. like on my mates because like, what, 10 bucks, 20 bucks. It's not that much and it supports a room. Mm. So it's like, it's like, yeah, you're coming to see me and you're going to see the other comedians and whoever's running the room has some more people in the room. They get a little bit to help them make the room work. Mm. So I'm like, it's, it's kind of like a, it's a win-win because I go, you know, 10 or 20 bucks is one or two drinks. Yeah. And most of the people I know drink. Yeah. So you're like, really? You're not going to pay that? Don't yeah. be a tight cunt. Just fucking do it. Like, I know you're coming because you want to see me. Mm. And I'm not telling the show, but someone is putting effort into making this work. And the only reason I've got a spot is because that person put the effort in. So, mm. give some cash. Yeah, man. I never saw it from that perspective, actually. That's really nice, yeah. Yeah. Cunts like me are the reason comedy rooms are shutting down, hey? <laughs> I wasn't saying that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck. But yeah, no, that's, I just said like it's it's a benefit that they're open. So to cut them out is kind of like, uh, you know, and most of the, the smaller rooms, they're fucking not making money. No. It's people. Man, it's, uh, <laughs> you know what's funny? Like I have this whole theory, right? Like so many times you go to a bar, it's a shitty bar, a shitty venue. You're like how the fuck do you have a night? <laughs> yeah. And like how is this place going? And then you turn around and there's like, 15 people in the crowd and 10 people, 12 people are the performers, one people is the promoter, there's three people in the audiences. They all have a drink in their hand. And then you realize, aha, the people questioning how this place is running are the people who are actually helping it run. Yeah. And the moment that conversation, like that, that arrangement stops, man, you're not going to have these bars. Yeah. You know, it's, it's so sad. Like I did a gig in Frio this, this week on Monday. Bro. Oh, Mary Cow? That's hit and miss there, but yeah, no, no, no. It's like not talking about the crowd, just the venue, man. I'm like, oh yeah, dude, the venue's like, real back out. What happened here? It's a, it's a club. It's not a venue. Yeah, it's, it's a club. It's a, it's a Buffalo club. Yeah, yeah. But I'm like, dude, like, what happened? Like, was internet never allowed into this place? No, the, Were lights that, never that allowed? Venue's fucking goes off on the weekend. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a really good music venue. Fuck. It's because that style is cool in Freo. Mm, I'm just talking about the style, right? Yeah. I'm just talking like the venue the, itself, yeah. The, the bathroom doors at Mosaic, and I'm like, dude, yeah. that, that I, I went to a Catholic school. That's on the church windows. Well, it's because it's a really old school building, yeah. and the Buffalo Club is a non for profit because it's a club. I don't even know. I, we tried. They take not for profit really seriously over there. I think oh, yeah. the drinks were so cheap, man. Yeah, because it's a club. Yeah, yeah, because it's a clubhouse. So they, if they actually make profit, and it, it doesn't go to anyone but back into the venue. Mm. So they all the money they make off drinks goes back into the venue, but it's so the people that are club members can go there and drink for cheap. So if Buffalo, we couldn't. I was trying to figure out what a fucking Buffalo club is. Like, it's kind of like a secret society. Yeah, because they don't tell you what it is. It's just like a place where you can hang out with other buffaloes, and you're like, what the fuck's a buffalo then? Come. Mm. Um, but it's just a social club, like a like a footy club or a fucking tennis club, a place where people that so are on the that. weekends it might be members only. No, no, on the weekends because the idea is if it's a club, they have bands and everything going there. The club still makes the money, but the members of the club don't make that money. They use it to upgrade the club. Mm. So that's how bikey clubs work. They like like a motorcycle club. They can have bars in their compounds because it's a club, and they can sell their drinks in there, and they can have their own pubs because that's a fucking club. Yeah, sick, man. Yeah. yeah. But it's all to, you know, make their, their venue or whatever better. But that, that place has been there forever. Yeah. And it's still I, I was just thinking, looking. someone someone asked me how would they be making money and this is what I thought, man. Like, again, I did not know that it's a not-for-profit club, this and that. But to, to me, it's like they might have bought it years ago for so cheap. Oh, so yeah, dude, cheap. Dude, Buffalo Club's been around for forever. Correct. And then whenever they sell the real estate, that's when they're going to capitalize on it. So for them, as long as it's not pinching them massively on their skin, like it's costing them 100K a year. And if it's like one person company, they have like, they're a millionaire. They have multiple yeah. properties and a big portfolio. 100K, if they're losing on one club, doesn't make a big difference because they know that the exit plan is to sell it for like millions of dollars. Well, that's like um, ALH, right? So Woolies alcohol brand for mm. all the pubs they own so every like A-L-H. nearly every local pub yeah. in wa 
is owned by them. So they own like stuff like the Swing and Pig. They own fucking, um, oh fuck, I can't even remember the name. It's ALHA. Yeah, they yeah. own the Brass Monkey. They, so they own all them little pubs. And they, you'll notice. Sneaky Tony's also them, I think. Nah, Sneaky no? Tony's are different. So Sneaky Tony's owns the, all the really nice, cool, funky ones. Yeah. ALH is Woolies. And they own like. Woolies, like Woolworths, the yeah. group. Oh, okay. And they own like any of the really big bars you'll notice in like a suburb that's named after a suburb. And it has like no one in there. It's a local pub, but it's got heaps of space. They're just holding on to them because mm. over east, mm. ALH owns all the pokey pubs. Yes. And so when the pokies ever get legalized here, they've got They're a whole capitalize. fucking room to stick them in. Wow. Yeah. Speaking of which, you think pokies would ever get legalized in WA? I don't know. I don't think so. I, I Look, I don't think the government's that nice to mm. not legalize them, right? It's a matter of population and control. Queensland's got them. Melbourne's got them. Sydney's got them. The other three states of WA don't have them, but we don't have fuck all population. You know, when did they get legalized in Melbourne? Because we're, I think, Perth's on its place to being Melbourne now. We've just hit like our three million people. Mm-hmm. This is That's when Melbourne started fucking populating like crazy. That's where it started. It's like, it's like steady rise. Yeah. If Perth does that, because we have all the money from mining and it kind of steadies out and we just fucking turn it into a tourist place, mm-hmm. which it very much seems like the, whatever you call that dickhead, that cook dude, he's trying to make it a very touristy place. Like Optus Stadium, that's touristy. They're fucking doing something else that's really touristy. So they're trying to make it more like that. If they do that, pokies will come. Crown hasn't done, the Crown Casino hasn't done the right thing. That, and they've got the, the, the choke hold on it. They're the ones that are stopping it from happening. Lobbying, you reckon? Yeah. Well, they're, they're like, mate, we want to make all the money. So if you put pokies in pubs, you take the money away from us. And as soon as they lose their hold and fucking there's enough people here, pokies go into pubs. The mm. government's not going to fucking stop it. They don't give a fuck. They make money off it. Mm. You know, that's all it is. Yeah, that's, man. That's how I say it. Yeah, because to, to me, man, there is, of course, there's money on the eastern states, but there's a different lifestyle. The number of people I saw hooked on drugs in Sydney, bro, it's is more people. way higher. Yeah, yeah, but it's also the lifestyle there. Yeah, it's just lifestyle. I I saw this chick. She bought me drinks after the gig, and then she's like, "Oh, he wants to karaoke this and that." And my other mate is like, "Dude, like, don't like this is every Friday for her. She's gonna go there do lines of coke. Are you into that?" I was like, "It's not my vibe at all, bro." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so he's like, yeah, just be careful. So like, that's just her lifestyle. Yeah. And like, that's one example. There's guy friends I have over there, just hooked on to drugs, man. Just yeah. fucking hooked. That's the lifestyle there though. So it's, it's not just about population. Yeah, there's population, but I had, if I take numbers, I had the same number of friends here that I have over there. A lot of them. Lot more on drugs over there. Correct. So it's just a big part of the lifestyle and the culture over there. Yeah. Uh, they say Perth doesn't have a culture. Yeah, well, if your drug culture is fucking drugs, yeah, we don't have it over here. You know, like, fair enough. But then I also think that a lot of uh, drinking, drinking is trouble over here. Yeah? Yeah. Like, over there? Yeah. You, I have never seen, like, not never is a big word. Like, I've seen people have, like, walking around. Dark. We have people walking around, like, goon bags and whatever over here, just outside, you know, bottle shops and this and that. Of all demographics, that happens. Yeah. So my understanding is, there's a lot of money over here. Same over there, but there's also way more avenues to spend it. Like yeah. rent is twice more expensive than here. So how have your money gone to rent? So we already have more disposable income over yeah, here. We've got a higher average. Correct. Over here. So my thinking is the moment they legalize pokies, bro, that disposable income is just going to get driven over there. I don't yeah. know if casino is going to get affected because casino is also the lifestyle. You get dressed up nice. Yeah. You walk in there. Pokies people are walking in their thongs and t-shirts and a pair of shorts. Like, who gives a shit? That's cast now too. Yeah, that's cast now? Yeah. Not, yeah. not, not thongs, but like yeah. the the idea of getting dressed up to go to cast here is not the same anymore. Mm. You just watch. What do we got? What are we in? No, no, no. Oh, th- I just got something. I, I, I don't have time. We're two fourteen. Like we got time. Yeah. What time you got to be in the city? Uh five thirty. Yeah, easy. Got another podcast. Yeah. Oh yeah. Fuck yeah. 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 Doing the uh the Garden Bar podcast in Fulu Shu actually. Oh yeah. 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 He's like, do you know a pub that we can advertise? And I was like, I know a guy. Yeah. Sick man. So, Sick. Should be good. We'll see. Yeah. We wonder. But- but then you're saying that casinos don't have that dressing up culture over here anymore. Nah, nah. Mm. It's like there's certain rules, but. Mm. I've seen cunts now with shorts and shit. Yeah. But I think it's a matter of like where can they 
get the money from be happy with it. Like I think right. pokies is a population thing because if you don't have cunts of the cast, mm. they get all shitty. Mm. But if you've got more people, you can be like, hey. There's everyone. Money. There's something for everyone. Yeah. I think that uh, like – they should start trying to build casinos up in like up north, like where the Aboriginals have their fucking mm. sacred spots. Well, not the sacred spots, but they're like, we've got all this land. Build a casino like the Indians do in America mm. or the Native Americans, I should say. Oh. Because that's genius. It's like, take some of the money back. Fuck it. Instead of just getting the royalties from the shit out of the ground, yeah, make a fucking gambling spot and just mm. fucking milk it. Nah, man. <laughs> no, that could have adverse effects. Like, even with uh, casinos, bro, like, over here, FIFO is a big culture. FIFO is culture. FIFO is culture yeah. in WA. Nothing exists like that over East. Yeah. Now, my angle is people show up to airport six hours early. Why? Uh, it's convenient for the missus, convenience for my partner, it's my boyfriend, my husband to drop me off. I mean, they could literally go to a pokey, spend six hours, get shit-faced, show up to work. It's just trouble in every aspect. And I somehow think that the moment it comes to mining, people were like, no, 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 we don't want to fuck with that. We want that to keep thriving. If people start getting addicted to pokies, because mines are they often will. the golden handcuffs anyways, right? Yeah. Because people end up getting this big job. Then they buy a house, car, da, 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 Golden handcuffs, baby. Now we got to keep servicing that debt. Need to keep this job. You add pokies into that, that's the success. To be fair. The recipe, it's a to disaster, not success. The people that want to play pokies over here that don't want to go to the cast just play it on their phone anyway. Mm. That happens anyway. That's I know plenty of people that just fucking get on the spins on their phone. Just... Yeah. So whether I, I think it will happen just because the government makes too much money off it for it not to happen. Mm. Uh, but I don't know when. You know what's interesting though in New South Wales? If you have um, pokies at your establishment, then you need to have some sort of other entertainment as well. Yeah. Yeah, and it that's can't where, just be a pub, like a gambling right. area. And that's where a lot of promoters capitalize and then put comedy shows. Sometimes I've done shows like 11 people in the crowd, man. And you're like, well, why is this even happening? They have to, because they have they to have fund to. the money around everything. They have to. Oh, bring the pokies here. Fuck it. Mm, mm, mm. More stage time, <laughs> baby. <go. laughs> More paid spots. Yeah, More stage that's time. What I'm, I'm fucking in. Let's do it. And imagine the comics will make 50 bucks and literally go into the pokies and spend it all. Oh, not me, but fuck yeah. it. There'll be some. There'll yeah, be some. Yeah, yeah. But hey, I'm down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've given me a real good reason for pokies to be here now. <laughs> Before that, I was like, there. Yeah. I, yeah. I think it's inevitable because the government. Now you've got ready. equity in it. Now I'm like, if they like, oh, should we put pokies? I'll be signing them. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. But on the proviso, comedy's down there as well. <laughs> wow, man. The ALH angle, I had no clue. That's fucking genius, man. That is just genius. The ALH thing you just said. Oh yeah, yeah. They, oh. I'm, dude, I'm 100 percent certain. Yeah, that's what they're keeping all them fucking pubs for. Because you're like the brass monkey. Mm. How many fucking spaces of that aren't used? <laughs> and they're like, don't do shit to it. They don't make it better. It's a massive venue. They've got so much staff. But one day, boom, pokies in one whole room, mm. and then they can really make money and do it up. Because like you go to the venues in like. I haven't been to Sydney, but in Melbourne, yeah, they've got fucking playgrounds in there. They've got yeah. pokies one bit, yeah, and then they've got a restaurant and then a playground. And I'm like, like a lawn ball bowling or something, like a fucking kids playground. Yeah, and I was like, I forgot the way I grew up was like mm. left in cars and shit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I went to a, a place last time it was in Melbourne, and on the front of it there was a sign that said "Don't leave your kids in the car," and it was like I was like, get fucked. They don't do that. Here. I was like, oh, I was born in Victoria. Of course they do that here. That's why I was brought up like that because that's what it was normal. Mm. I was like, this is fuck. You could just leave kids in the car. Oh, dude, I was left in the car so much as a kid. And then what? Like your parents are shopping or like doing whatever? Gambling most of the time. <laughs> yeah, I was, it was so you one sit time. sit in the car for how long? One time I was in the car for four hours. Wow. While my fucking stepdad was in the TAB. Wow. Yeah. And I knew it because it was an old fucking car with the little digital clock. And I remember mm. we were meant to go watch Mortal Kombat 2. That's what we we're going you to said, do that day. Yeah. And I sat in the car, fucking cooking, mm. while that cunt was in the TAB. Yeah. And the only you had reason, a moral combat. Well, moral, no, well, Mo what? moral combat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, in the car. Yeah. Well, the only reason I found that it was bad was because we were driving near that same TAB one day, and I was like, "No, not the TAB." Mm. My mum's like, "What do you mean?" Yeah. And then they had a fucking argument about it, and I was like, "Oh, that's not normal." Yeah. I was like, but you leave me in the garbage. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, man. Yeah. 
Well, see, luckily in India, we did not have a car. So, <laughs> <laughs> Can't be left you said to fucking go around with them everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, it was, it was, it was, but when I seen that sign, I was like, what? No, that doesn't still happen. Like, cunts, what the fuck? And that's because pokey places have to put them up because some cunts will go to the pokey joint, get a couple of spins and fucking, maybe nah, you're up. No, and they this, won't. This sounds so stupid. Mum used to take me to office all the time. Okay, because like, what, what else is he going to do? You know, it's like summer vacations. Often she'd leave me home, but like once, if I do too much fucking stupidity on the day she wasn't around, then the day she's, she's like, fuck, you're coming into office. And yeah, like, okay. so you don't trash the house. Yeah, and then she would give me like time tables. Like, fuck, I don't know why. Indian parents just love math homework. All right, they just keep giving it. It's like, all right, do 481 times 481. Do, like why it's like just do it keeps just you busy occupied yeah so 481 times 1 481 times 2 all the way to 481 then that's 41 square I'm like this is so stupid dude I'm never gonna use this you know it's good for you it's like okay and then I would just go to her office and just do this and I would get bored and like always there would be like some other lady and like so like we call Didi and Bahia it's like it's like younger than your parents but still they're closer to your age than your parents' age. Yeah, yeah. So then they're like, Bahia and Didi's. And then oh, they're like, you know, a cute kid walking around doing time sales. They're just fucking taking me around the office. And like, I saw this water cooler and I would just put the bottle and then turn this on. A blah, 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 and it's like bubbles would go down. I would just You're keep like, laughing. For that. So stupid. <laughs> so cringe. Like, they would have probably thought that I'm like, I got special needs or something, man. I was bored, dude. I was just, what else can I do? Yeah. And I still remember one one time my mom's manager, like we used to have these old phones, the flip ones, right? And they used to have like an antenna on the top. Yeah, my remember And then ones. mom was in sales and then this guy came up to mom and then said, if you don't perform, and then he just showed her that phone gun. Went home and I told my dad and brought next day, fucking hell, the boss came and apologized to my mom. Really? Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> it's like shit. So there, there was like benefits again, of, huh? yeah, <laughs> benefits of hanging out with mom, but fuck. Have you heard Shane Gillis's bit on like, when when a boy becomes a man, yeah. Oh, like you're just your mum's gay best friend, yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're just like, one day you just have a wank, and you're like, oh. <laughs> I love him, man. He's probably my favorite comedian right now. So good. Yeah. Do you listen to MSSP? Oh, what is that? Matt and Shane's secret podcast. No. So good. Now, Matt, who's Matt? What? Matt McCusker. Okay. No, yeah. no, I don't know. It's very good. But you know what I'm hating about this whole Shane Gillis moment, though. Every comic in Australia, I don't know about the world, just has the same delivery setup and stage persona as Shane Gillis because they're watching him so much. The same happens when Dave Chappelle launches a special and everyone starts slapping their thigh and like tapping the mic on their thigh because Dave Chappelle does it. Writes edgy stuff because Dave Chappelle's done it. And suddenly everyone's got gender jokes. Why? That's what Dave Chappelle's talking about. With Shane Gillis, I'm not even kidding you. There's literally guys performing like this. I, I went to Newcastle. Fucking funny, guys, but this is their. I'm like that because where else do you put your hand? You can do anything. But I, oh, I'm you mean they're only doing that and that. that? Like, it's just like the setup and punchline. Like, the setup, setup is done, punchline is done. Oh, so you think, like it's not even natural, exactly. it's just mechanical. Yeah, it's yeah. just mechanical. And it's literally because I can see them writing like Shane yeah. and delivering it like Shane, where. And I've I've done I've been in that spot, you know, like where we emulate comedians that we really follow. But then man, you always have a niche where you like this one comic or two comic or three comics you emulate. Like for me it was Russell Peters, uh Cat Williams, you know, so like I like even right now, like I'm trying to be more flexible like Cat Williams on stage. He takes the whole fucking stage over. So I'm like looking forward to achieving that level of comfort. But then just Shane Gillis, like one comic, and everyone's got the same identity on stage, same persona. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> some originality would be appreciated. Some. It might be like a subconscious thing. It is? Yeah. Be that, that's what I'm saying. Because you're seeing so much of him that you become him, and then everyone else is also doing the same. So you actually think that, oh, yeah, that's, that's just how, this is how it's done. But then you step away from it and you realize, aha, I see what's They're happening. Not, not critiquing themselves enough. Yeah. yeah. Because I, I got a wake up call. My, my ex told me, like, hey, you know, your delivery is like, just like, the rest of is like, fuck, so I had to work on it. Now I have my own delivery, which I'm still working on because I laugh in the mic at the end of some jokes. <laughs> it's like, oh, dude, it's like, people don't mind it. But when I go home and I listen to my recordings, it's like, oh, dude, don't do it. Mm. So I have to like cut off it at some point. But it's still me. And 
yeah, man, just just my thought. It like really, I it grinds my gears, bro. If I'm the MC of a night, and then eight people are on the lineup and five people do that, I'm like, dude, <laughs> this was just like Shane Gillis and friends right now. Like it wasn't even lineup. The Shane show. Gillis impersonation acts. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the Shane Gillis impersonation acts. Yeah. Oh fuck. You know, I I I know when I first started, there was some things I was accidentally doing similar to like Mark Norman. Mm. Like my arms were moving this way. I was like, oh. I seen it and I was like, what are you doing? Why is that happening? And I was like, oh, it's because like, because I was so mechanical in the start. Yeah. Where it was like my, it sounded script. I felt like I sounded scripted. You look at Martin Darcy, Mark Norman. Next time you see, I, I don't know if you think you're similar? Dude. Like I still remember <laughs> someone came to the comedy lounge and to visit a show and they were like, they're a comedy critique. Yeah. Like a big one. I think Chortle, Chortle, is like in the UK, they're like big, their reviews make a big difference in the comedy world and to like o- comedy audiences as well with good taste. Yeah. And they literally commented like something like Martin Darcy was like, you know, his Asian delivery was like, Mar- yeah, something like that. <laughs> it's like, dude, until that day, I never saw it. Yeah. It is like, uh-huh. and then Martin does is like, uh-huh. I'm like, dude, <laughs> that I'm thinking is about insane. it. There is some spots. Yeah. There is. Yeah. I love Martin, but oh, he's I love, so funny. I, he's like, well, I, I love him, man. I love him. I love him. But I was like, I, I still haven't had that conversation with him, but I was like, ah, ah. <laughs> like for me, it was just like a big reveal. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, it was just so funny. Yeah. I'm trying to think who else has got like really significant stage movements that I've seen other people do. Um. Maybe I haven't noticed that much. So I can't think of anyone. But for me, I I, I notice everything, and and that's just because like the awareness thing. Like I'm too aware of what's happening, so is I literally go from aware? head to toe. Sorry, is, is there it such thing as too aware? Yeah, yeah, it can be, man, because it's like well, it's just a lot of information, but it helps you learn. Yeah, but it also becomes a bit overwhelming sometimes. Yeah. Like you just want to chill. Like I I go to a bar, I just want to have a drink, but then in my head, I'm like, okay, so there was three people on the left, two on the right. You know what it is? If yeah. you drank more, mm. you'd have more of that chill. Because that's like, for me, the way to shut off a heap of the like extra noise is just drink. Uh, so you are, I I did not see the debate, but it was you versus Rahul. Hey? Oh, yeah, yeah. Alcohol. So he was non-alcohol or he yeah, was... he al- was non-alcohol no, and I was positive yeah. alcohol, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he was just like, no. And I was just like, drinking rules, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love it. <laughs> dude, Rahul is interesting, bro. Oh. Bro, this is what I'm finding funny recently. He started calling everyone like beta males. <laughs> oh, he's been doing that the whole time, dude. Remember, remember? He did not come across to me, but like recently we've been talking. He's like, oh, dude, they're betas. I was like, I had to Google because I know alpha male. I was yeah. like, what the fuck is a beta male? He was saying that back when you were running um, comedy at the craft. <laughs> like when we go to dinner and he'd be like, that's a beta male. <laughs> and you're like, oh, I'm going to hook up with you, Rahul. And he's just like, no, that's gay. You can't do that. <laughs> You're like, oh man, it's going to be... I can only see that like... You know Rahul hey, does it. Hey bro, how's yeah. it going bro? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, all the, these fucking the, betas around. It's yeah, like... Yeah. <laughs> you just walk into the room. There's three other people in the crowd. It's so good. I love it. Oh, it's man. It's so funny. Do you remember that time we went to dinner at um Billy Lee's? And I just... I was just on one, just ripping Rahul to shreds. I just got him. Every, every time he said something, I was just like, boom, boom, boom. Bro, like, it, was, <laughs> it was hard for him, man. And there was one more girl. I can't remember who it was. It's two interesting girls that came with us last night. The fellow oh, comics. G. G. And she was like getting G, scared dude. of him being yeah, like a G rapist. and Rahul just said like, fuck. <laughs> She's <laughs> like, you, you seem like someone that's like going to rape someone, like a sexual offender. He's like, no, I'm not that. <laughs> dude, but that, that conversation got so awkward. I was like, I just want to have my fucking chili pepper chicken. <laughs> dude, I thought it was hilarious because dude. they were getting real intense at each other. And I was just sitting back like, I'm just going to... Chicken a couple of jobs here that's gonna be real funny. Fact. But he Dude, was, I literally wanted to get up and leave. I was like, this is so I, I shit. I could see you on because you I kept could trying so to like uncomfortable. I was like, and I, I was literally doing like, yeah, you know, life is hard for different people. I, like, <laughs> <laughs> I just like tried to be like the harbinger of joy. I was like, yeah, life is hard, you know, yeah. Some people go through tough lives, but how good is the chicken? It's yeah. like they're like, no, but my life was this bad. I was like, Dude. <laughs> and it was so sad because like we've had a good gig and now everyone is like trauma dumping. I'm like, dude. The only thing I want to be dumbed on right now is with chicken, man. I want to be eating this food. Yeah, <laughs> fucking shit. 
I see, I found the funnier part of it because I was like, oh, these two are just going at it. And I was like, I'm just going to make jokes. <laughs> I didn't uh, it's like, I, I hate when like, what, what is it called? Uh, bickering, when people bicker, man. Yeah. B- and Over nothing. And to be honest, like there's going to be fucking, my ex is going to see this if they do. They're going to be like, you can't, like you bicker. I used to bicker a lot. I was a very <laughs> petty person. I have like actively worked on it. And now that is why someone does it to me. It's just like bringing bad memories from the past. Oh, yeah, you're like, ah. Oh. Just forgive. I ah, forgive you. It reminds you of when you were bitching. And you're like, I, exactly. Yeah. And, and bro, like working. It's, it's kind of pointless. Like if you know someone's not going to change mm. and you talk shit about them, then you're only pissing yourself off. Because if you talk shit about them to somebody else, all you're doing is going, hey, I don't like that. And you know they're not going to change. So if you want to tell it to them and they're not going to change, you, you get no win. Yeah. You're just like, oh, man, I just spent all this time just like dribbling some shit about someone that's not doesn't give a fuck. Waste my time. I just found it easier to forgive and move on because it's for your mental peace. I, I, I don't call it forgiveness. I call it mm. acceptance. I'm like, I accept you a good for point. being a dickhead. Yeah. yeah. Continue. <laughs> yeah, so so like when I say forgive, like I, I work on a threshold where I'm like, is this tolerable or not tolerable? Like yeah. to what point can I tolerate it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if it's tolerable, I'm like, I forgive you, man. Like I'll, I'll live with it. But if it's not tolerable, recently had it with someone, man. Fuck. A mutual, a, a good friend of mine introduced that to this person. Stupidest fucking small talk this guy does. This is the fellow, you know, she's a friend. Uh, stupidest fucking small talk. And I literally, like, after he left, I was like, hey, I'm really sorry. I'm like, I'm, and she's like, no, you don't have to wear I'm like, no, it's, we're fucking adults here. Who says that shit? Like, it was nothing demeaning or like, yeah. like, what do you say? Sex is nothing like that. It was just stupid. Like, fucking stupid. It's like, I'm, I'm so sorry. Like, pointless. And, like, you don't yeah, even, yeah. And then I, I did not even talk to this guy because I'm like, dude, I, like, I, I love you. Like, you, you're my mate. Fucking whatever. I have to, like, accept it and, like, move along. But just means I can't introduce you to all of my friends. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know, like that's it. It was like, e. mm. yeah. Yeah, no, I get that. I reckon we uh, we wrap it up on that, actually. Let's do it, bro. What do you got a promo before? <laughs> yeah, fuck While yeah. you're here. Oh, when does, when, I'll just promo for later, man. Um, I'm going to be back for both Fringe 2025. Yeah. So anyone watching? You're here, you're here for a month, aren't you? No, man. Probably just two weeks this year. Okay. Yeah, yeah no. two weekends. So Feb, uh, last weekend of Jan. So I think thirty first. I mean, while you're here now, when do you leave? Now I leave on the nineteenth of October. Mm-hmm. Oh fuck, you're in and out. Mm. Okay, yeah. In and out, bro. Yeah. Promote for Fringe then. <laughs> yeah, promote for Fringe. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. <laughs> so um, if I get to chan- get a thanks for letting me plug my stuff. So it would be Fringe. So back yep. in Fringe Train Twenty Five. Still deciding on the name, but most likely going to be From Mumbai with Love. It's going to bring out the back brand, uh, old brand back. And going to be doing shows in the city. Fremantle and Kalamanda, most likely. Oh, nice. Yeah. Just and gonna spread From Mumbai with around. Love is an all-ages show, right? Oh. oh. It's like you can have, you can bring teenagers or are you sticking to all adults now? I'm going to stick to all adults now. Yeah. Just because I use the word fuck this, that. like that, That's that's oh. all it is, yeah. I remember you had it clean before, right? Yeah, just just swearing. That's all I've done. Yeah. And uh, I just allowed the show to be funny because this side splitter on, Oct- on Saturday. Now, that would have been really awkward if I promoted it as a family friendly show. Yeah. Older couple. I was like, how long you guys been together? 47 years sick. What's the secret? The guy starts laughing. He's like, oh, you ask her, man. You put me in the spot. Everyone's laughing. It's like, ma'am, what is the secret? She said, good sex. I was like, fuck. I was like, and everyone laughed. And I was like, uh, and then the bloke was like an Aussie bloke. He's like, yeah, right. He's like so pumped about it. I was like, fuck yeah, brother. That's the energy. So like, that is so funny. And I don't want to take that joy away from my audiences where yeah. they're allowed to, if it's something funny. And I have like all these dating stories. I'm working on this one story where a girl like, what do you call it? Red fish? What? Catfished me. Oh, catfish, yeah. Yeah, but like not with how she looked, but what she was wearing. She what told way? me she's coming to my place. She's like, send me pictures of all these like sexy yeah. black lingerie. And then didn't wear it. Yeah. <laughs> and like my heart was broken, man. So like I'm trying yeah. to work that into a bit, like the whole yeah. incidence of how that worked out. And this is going to be phenomenal. So I'm like, I don't want to take that away, like that yeah. creative side. Just because I'm more comfortable talking about it on stage now. I'm, yeah. I'm allowing it to be like, I would say nothing is going to, I don't drop the C word anyways. Nothing. I won't say, and then I was penetrating or I was on top. Of, like none of that shit. So I would yeah. still say 
kids 15 and over like parental yeah. advisory is that what they say pa 15 yeah. plus or something like that like that's still fine yeah. but previously bro like people bring like six seven year old kids man yeah, i was like this is sick man last year like any age don't mind any age bro yeah I gotta move tickets baby yeah Th- these were my two rules in comedy one rule is still gonna say rule number one was people of all ages welcome it's gonna be super clean show no problem so grandparents would come with grandkids they have like a nice outing i'm like sick yeah you know i just four people bought tickets if it wasn't the otherwise only two people would buy tickets yeah. but now i'm also comfortable of selling more tickets myself yeah so i'm like letting go of it and the second rule is late comers are permitted at any time because what happens many times people are so late that they don't show up and then they email the venue like hey this that happened family issues this that happened refund i'm like dude no refunds at my show yeah you want to come 45 minutes late you'll be allowed in there's always going to be seats come have a seat yeah we'll just keep continue the show yeah so yeah. that's that's a vibe yeah cool well anything i've got to promote is fringe the violators come that's going to be r18 there's no kids violators no 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 kids at all unless your kids real fucked up and you want to torture them but i don't think they'll let the kid in the venue and they can trauma bond i would just be like man i'm not alone <laughs> <laughs> But then you really got to look at yourself as a parent yeah. <laughs> and be like, what have I done? You are the problem. Yeah, yeah. you are clearly the problem. Yeah. All right, catch up.